What can a poem be? It could start as a blank page and a full mind. Memories and experiences swirl in the heart of the poet, travel through every vein and artery, squeeze into the lungs until it releases on the side of a breath where beauty can be found therein. And what can a poem be? if not the gentle caress of a breeze or a chorus of birds encouraging a new song, a promise that with each day, dawn comes and isn't that a poem I see in the sunrise? <laughs> if even the celestial bodies are speaking a poetic language, then what can a poem be? If not the touch of a loving hand or the homemade soup when you were sick or the phone call on the holidays or the dance floor where memories were made or the mural you saw on the wall or the time you helped an elder bring in groceries from their car or held the door for a stranger, what can a poem be if not everything? and nothing but a speck of stardust in the cosmos, but even a tiny speck can tip the scales. Don't you see what a poem can be when the sum of all our parts come together and we are all poets? <laughs> then a poem can be a star map to the universe, one that calls us into every part of ourselves, one that calls us as we are, human, teacher, neighbor, partner, sibling, friend. So, what can a poem be? When we are to gather together again, then even a tiny speck of a poem can call us home. Poetry, <laughs> it is everywhere and in everything. But what exactly is poetry and what makes a poet? Put simply, I would say, poetry is an expression of beauty that often uses certain forms and patterns to shape what we call a poem. And it's also much deeper than that. Poetry is a language, one that is rich and diverse because it is an expression of our human experience. And throughout human history, we have always tried to express ourselves in some way. I think about our prehistoric ancestors, for example, and how they would draw pictures on the walls of their homes. And sometimes I wonder, what if one of those pictures was a poem? Or I think about the first time someone moved their bodies to a rhythm, to a beat, and made dancing. I wonder if they knew they were creating poetry through the language of their bodies. But even in the seemingly mundane, the simple things like a child marveling at a butterfly, there's poetry in that. And it got me to thinking, if poetry can be found in each of those things and everything in between, then perhaps poetry can be found in you and in me too. Now, maybe your poetry looks like the written word. And if so, yes, poet, pick up your pen and write. <laughs> or maybe your poetry can be found in painting or baking or fashion. Maybe 
Your poetry is in every love song you've ever sang at the top of your lungs in the shower. <laughs> because that's where we all sound good. <laughs> you see, poetry is not a fixed point. There is no one path to making it. Your poem may differ from my poem, but our shared humanity is the same. And in that way, poetry is everywhere. It is in us and all around us, written and unwritten, if we just allow ourselves to let it be and let it come forth. And that poetry, your poetry, that expression, that language, however it comes, makes each and every one of us poets. Congratulations, you're a poet now. <laughs> so, what can a poem be if not you, if not me? We are all poets as far as my eyes can see. The power to name ourselves for ourselves and our humanity means a poem can be anything. Thank you. <laughs>